What's up, friends? Welcome back to another episode of the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Thanks so much for joining me today. I could not be more excited about going over Jaden Reed today in his full scouting report, so I am not going to waste any time. We are going to jump in right away. If you're not familiar, Jaden Reed is a 5'10 and a half foot tall, 187 pound wide receiver out of Michigan State. He is a fifth year senior. He just turned 23 over draft weekend, so a hell of a birthday present getting selected by the Green Bay Packers. Technically, the day after his birthday is when he was selected, but I digress. He did start his career at Western Michigan, then redshirted a season and ultimately moved to uh, Michigan State. And he was a freshman All-American at Western Michigan as well, which allowed him to sort of make that climb up to Michigan State and play in Big Ten football. Statistically, he finished his career with 203 yards, or sorry, 203 catches for 2,866 yards, a 14.1 yard average, and 26 touchdowns. His best season was in 2021 when he had 59 catches for 1,026 yards, a 17.4 yard average, and 10 touchdowns. So, very good stats through the course of his career. You love the 17.4 yard average in 2021, 14.1 yard average through the course of his career. Again, over 26 touchdowns, 2,866 yards in his career. So he definitely stacked statistics. And again, from freshman All-American to playing really, really great in 2021, Michigan State as a whole took a little bit of a step back in 2022, but he still put up numbers and had a catch in every single one of his games at Michigan State. So he continued to pack that box score through pretty much his entire career in college football. From an athletic standpoint, a non nine point something RAS, not an eight point something RAS. He had a 6.74 relative athletic score, did not compete in the three cone, had a 445 40 yard dash, which was one of his best attributes. And his best attribute was his 1.53 10 yard split, which was in the 90th percentile overall lifetime for wide receivers. So not the usual athlete, not the usual height, not the usual weight, not the usual high RAS score. So this is a little bit off brand for Green Bay and what they ultimately like to do usually at the wide receiver position. Now, from an athletic comp standpoint, again, there's two different formulas that are used. RES has their own, and then Mock Draftable has their own. RES, not so great comps here. Armonte Edwards, the former App State wide receiver, TJ Jones, the former Notre Dame wide receiver, and DeAndre Topkins, the former Penn State wide receiver, were the three most likely comps from the RAS athletic profile. Now on Mock Draftable, a little bit different. Dee Westbrook, Jalen Waddell for the Dolphins, Kenny Stills, John Mechie, who had to set out all last season for the Texans, and then KJ Hamler of the Denver Broncos. But you can see here, the theme is some undersized, speedy wide receivers is what his ultimate athletic profile is. Now that's just an athletic profile. It doesn't mean that like how his play style is or anything like that. But if you're looking for just a pure algorithm, uh, you know, athletic profile, those are the, you know, the, what the algorithms spit out as their potential matches athletically. Uh, from a PFF standpoint, in 2018 with Western Michigan, he had a 74.4 grade. In 2020, a 62.7 grade. In 2021, that best season, as I mentioned, an 82.2 grade. And this past year in 2022, he had a 70.4 grade. Again, all of those per PFF. So that's sort of the background. Let's get into the real meat and potatoes of the scouting report. And this is my individual notes from going back. And as I always say, watching as much tape as I can possibly find on Jaden Reed. And if you didn't watch my Twitter, and you know, see some of the videos that I posted, I would highly recommend checking that out. Again, at Andy Herman NFL, posted some really fun videos. But the first note that I have, and it was the first video I posted as well, he is tenacious and he is intense. So very first game that I watch uh, from 2021, he goes out immediately, very first play of the game, it's a running play. He goes out and he basically starts going right at the, the corner. He's pushing him, he's shoving him, he's getting up in his face and all in like a very legal way. I'm not saying he's like taunting or anything like that. He's, he's immediately getting after him. Super tenacious, super intense. Later in the game, on the other side of the field, and this is against Michigan, by the way, on the other side of the field, uh, he and another player are blocking a corner and they start to block him and they get to the out of bounds and the other guy's like, all right, whatever. He continues to block him all the way, like not only just out of bounds, but like to the, to the benches, like he's again, that you see this over and over on tape. 
just completely tenacious player. That one was probably penalty worthy, but that's sort of the vibe that you continue to get from this player, especially just again, like how he attacks things and how he goes after things. It's just kind of the player he is. On that very next play, after he goes and you know gets that guy to the bench and, and, and blocks him out of bounds, the very next play, what does he do? He's right up on the corner again, blocking him, just constant, like a little snippy dog that's you know biting your ankles and just making you mad and ticked off. And the first thing I said is, you know that guy in every single team where you're like, if he's on the opposite team, I hate that guy, but if he's on my team, I love that guy. They got one of those guys and you are going to love having him on your team because he is one of those guys. And if he is on your team, you're going to absolutely love him. And with that, he plays and just has a great confidence and a great swagger about him. In a way, if you want to know kind of the easy way to break him down, you know how Jair was coming out of college as a corner? Flip him to the other side of the ball, have him be out of Penn or, uh, Michigan State and have him be a wide receiver. And that's what you basically kind of get with Jaden Reed. That's the type of competitor he is. That's the kind of feisty he is. Imagine Jair at wide receiver, and now you've got a great idea of what he is from a tenacious standpoint. And let me just tell you right now, sign me up for as many Jair Alexander versus Jaden Reed one-on-ones, matchups on the outside. I just sign me up for all of them. I cannot wait. It is going to be a ton of fun. Going along with that, he battles for everything all the time constantly battling no matter what the situation. This is the this is like I don't know where he was if, if like from a family standpoint if he had older brothers, older sisters, whatever it was. This is like little brother syndrome where you just you had to compete against your jerk older brothers through your entire life and you had to like you just find a way to even though they're bigger than you, they're taller than you, they're older than you, they're faster than you, like you were still going to beat them. Like he has that constantly. Doesn't matter if they're bigger, doesn't matter, doesn't matter anything. Does not matter. He's going to compete for it. He's going to win it and he's going to take your soul doing it. Like that is what Jaden Reed is going to bring to the table. Contested catches galore, diving catches galore. He attacks you as a run blocker, as we just kind of talked about a second ago. A ton of catches through contact, survives the catch going to the ground. There's a play where uh, I, I posted where he's he's kind of coming back to the ball and he's going against DJ Turner, the second round pick for the, the Cincinnati Bengals out of Michigan. And he's going against him. And Michigan uh, State's quarterback throws the wobbliest duck of a ball ever that's behind that's behind him. And DJ Turner has a great chance at the ball. By the way, DJ Turner is six foot tall and out muscles him considerably. Somehow the ball kind of gets, you know, they, they both go for the ball and it kind of gets jostled a little bit, kind of gets tipped in the air. Guess what happens? This is right by the sideline too, by the way. Somehow he readjusts, gets both hands on the ball, doesn't just get one foot down, gets both feet down, then hits the ground hard, survives the catch, and keeps it in his grasp, and it's a huge first down for Michigan State. And then, on the very next play, they throw to him on the opposite side. The quarterback woefully underthrows the ball. What does he do? He makes a diving catch on the ball and makes sure he secures the catch, and it's first down Michigan State again. This is exactly what you see from him over and over and over on tape. He's unafraid to go over the middle of the field. He's completely confident in a crowd of players. So if there's guys buzzing around him everywhere, doesn't matter. He's going to find a way to come up with that catch. In fact, he's almost better in those situations where he's ultra focused and knows he has to come down with it. Uh, we'll get to the other side of that in just a moment. But in those situations, he finds a way to come down with the ball. And like I said, he's ultra focused in those situations. And here's the other thing about how he battles it all the time. They used him. Remember, five ten and a half. Five ten and a half. They used him in Michigan State as a jump ball wide receiver at on multiple occasions. On multiple occasions, they in the red zone, they used him as a jump ball guy on fade routes. They used him as a jump ball guy on deep balls. That's how they viewed him. It didn't matter that he was 5'10 and a half. They trusted him to go up and get the ball. And you know what he did more often than not? Went up and got the ball, came down with it, made big plays over and over and over again. He battles for everything at all times in blocking, in pass catching and contested catch situations, when you don't think he has a chance at it, he's going to somehow find a way to come down with that ball. His other thing, speed, 44540. And if you heard anyone talk about Jaden Reed, what you heard about all the time is, yeah, he tested 445, but we thought he was going to test in like the four threes. Yeah, we we he tested 445, but he played much faster on tape. He tested 445, but he is way more explosive. Like that's all you heard. It's like he yeah, he was he tested fast, but we actually think he's faster. The reason that that is 
is his pacing on his routes is phenomenal. And his explosiveness when he can cut and make a move is phenomenal. So that 10-yard split where he can make a quick cut, that shows up on numerous occasions. Uh, The other thing is that he knows how to vary his route speed. So he'll be throttled down, throttled down, throttled down, bam, uses that quick first step acceleration, then that four, four, five, 40 speed. And what looked like you, you know, where you just, you know, I got this guy in coverage. I can cover him. All of a sudden he uses a second gear. You're not expecting it. And he's gone. Like that's the type of, you know, speed. And that's why it looks like when everyone's saying like, yeah, I thought he was even faster on tape because he varied his route speed and he was very nuanced with how he did that. And that just made him even feel and look and play faster than even the 4 4 5 40 speed that he tested at. So he's very fast, but he plays even faster than what he tested with that 4 4 5 40. And he is a real weapon in those situations where he has the ability to use that speed. There is a play on tape in a goal line. Uh, it was a goal line fade actually against Maryland where they didn't have to throw him a jump ball situation because he got 50 50. He kind of used some chop steps at the beginning of the route. And he finally got the corner to commit just a millisecond. So he gets that corner to commit. And what does he do? He makes that super ultra quick cut, that first step explosiveness. By the time the corner knew what happened, he had four yards of separation and the ball was in the end zone and he had a beautiful touchdown catch. Like that, that quick speed, that quick burst, that quick acceleration is a weapon and he uses it to his, you know, at his disposal and he uses it to great success. And I think that's going to definitely be something that carries over in the NFL. And the other thing that he does very well with that is his double moves. And you talk about first step explosiveness, you talk about change of direction, and you talk about route speed and varying routes. He has the ability to sell you on a route and then have that first step explosion and then beat you with four, four, five, forty speed. Just when you think he's running and out, he's running and out and up. Just when you think he's running and in, he's gonna like write, you know, cut it off and run a post. Like he can make you think that he's doing one thing and then he's gonna go in an entirely different direction. And just when you think you're gonna be able to catch up to him, he's got another burst and a gear to him. And it, that four, four, five takes over. And it's just really, really fun to watch. So he has speed, he has explosiveness, he has acceleration, and it all shows up on tape. The best part though, maybe the best part, I don't know, all of these are kind of best parts if I'm being honest, but he has all of the nuances of being a true wide receiver. Like we talk about traits versus skill and we're, we've been seeing it. I've been saying it over and over when I've been talking about the, the wide receiver position is it's great to have traits. Traits are always good. Look at Christian Watson. Christian Watson is traits king at wide receiver. Not many people on the you know planet earth have traits the way that Christian Watson has traits. Guess what? That paid off pretty big a season ago. It's going to continue to pay off for him. However, you can also look at skill and you look at guys like Stefan Diggs. You look at guys like Devonte Adams. You look at, you know, some of the top wide receivers in this league. They certainly have some traits too. I'm not going to say that they're just like, you know, awful athletes by any means, but these are not four, three, 40 guys. They're not six, four guys. They're not, you know, 70, you know, foot vertical leap guys. Like they're, good athletes, but they are massively, massively skilled at the position. Justin Jefferson, massively skilled at the position, also a great athlete. But you have to have that level of skill if you really want to reach another level, right? He has some of that skill and nuance coming out of college, which is so incredibly rare. He, His hands at the catch point, there's a play from a senior bowl, and kudos to Ben Fennel for pointing this out. There's a play at the senior bowl where he's going down the field on a nine route. It's just one-on-ones. It's just one-on-ones. You might be thinking, Allen Iverson, we talking about practice. We're talking about practice here because this is special. So he's breaking down and going down the route and there's some hand fighting going on, which is good. That's what you want to see out of your wide receiver. The five yard line comes and he sees the ball. He sees the ball. Five yard line comes. He takes his eye off the ball to go back and get the hands off of him and to kind of put his shoulder into the corner. So the ball's coming down. The ball's coming down. And you know, wide receivers coming out of college, just wide receivers in general, they don't like taking their eye off of that ball once they know it's coming. So he, not only comfortable taking his eye off the ball, taking his eye off the ball to make an adjustment to get the to get a fraction, a fraction more separation from that corner, gets that fraction of separation, puts his shoulder into him, completely legal, by the way, 
gets his head turned back around, late hands. I think the ball was actually overthrown and it ends up like he ends up catching it out of the end zone. It's completely irrelevant. It's not like a real play anyway. But that nuance, I mean, there are few wide receivers in the NFL that have that nuance. That is, as Ben Fennel posted, advanced, advanced stuff. That's super exciting. Then you watch him throughout his routes that he's going through. He's using his head movement. He's selling routes all over the place. If you're a safety and you've got him, you know, with the option to run maybe a post or a you know corner route, whatever it is, good luck because he's going to sell you one way. You're going to start going one way. He's going to cut back the opposite. He knows how to sell you with head fakes, with his eyes, with his route running. He has some real nuance. And if you're running with a man to man, guess what? He knows how to get his hands off of you or your hands off of him. He knows how to separate. He knows how to put his shoulder in you, take his eyes off the ball, flashlight hands. This is advanced stuff from a wide receiver coming out of college. He uses great deception. We already talked about his pacing on his routes. He is far more skilled than the vast majority of wide receivers coming out of college. He has great timing. Like he knows exactly when to get his head turned around. He knows the pacing of the, the route and what it needs to be. He knows how to track to track the ball and adjust to the ball down the field. And he knows how to manipulate defenders. And that all goes with pacing, eye movement, head movement, everything. But he knows how to manipulate defenders and get them to do what he wants them to do. That is skill. So you want to know why Green Bay maybe was willing to take him without a nine something RAS score. It's because he is an incredibly skilled wide receiver that has a lot of nuance to his game. Some more stuff about him. He's really great at a slot fade. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to be upset that he has now a slot fade wide receiver that's really fantastic at it. Uh, he beat Dax Hill on a gorgeous slot fade, came down with a great touchdown, had another against Illinois, just some beautiful route running on that play. So runs a really nice slot fade. He's also been incredibly clutch. So a couple scenarios for you uh, against Michigan. I think it was against Michigan. Maybe it was, I think it was against Michigan. Uh, I could be wrong in the, I might be getting some games confused in my mind, but late in the game, they're down by two. It's fourth quarter. I want to say like 10 minutes left. They're down by two. They just scored a touchdown and they're going for the two point conversion. Opportunity to tie the game in the fourth quarter. They do a bunch of motion and they get Jaden Reed to the the right side of the, the, the uh, you know, conversion and right side of the field. And what do they do? DJ Turner again, six foot tall, big muscly guy, one on one, five ten and a half wide receiver. Who's calling a Who's calling a fade route to a five ten wide receiver against a six foot tall, physically built, amazingly fast athlete in in Turner? They threw it to They threw it to him. The play was designed to go to him. They threw a fade route to him, and you know what he does? Skies goes up and gets it over DJ Turner, comes down with the ball, high points it, two point conversion, tie game. Again, this stuff is all over his tape. How about this? Sorry, Badger fans, uh, first of all. Third and 12 overtime last year. They're at the 28 yard line. Third and 12. 28 yard line, what are you looking at? A 45 yard field goal ish? Certainly no guarantee in college. All right, so what are we going to do? All right, we got, we got Jaden Reed one on one on the right side. How about we just throw it to him deep in the end zone on a nine route? He can go up and get it. All right. What does he do? Throw it to him. They throw it to him deep on a nine route, one-on-one, -on -one, skies for the ball, high points it, comes down, catches it, touchdown, game winner, Michigan State wins. Like, talk about some clutch, clutch moments. Jaden Reed has certainly come up with those as well. As mentioned, he beat Dax Hill, DJ Turner. Like, he's gone up against some really good corners and really good, you know, defensive backs and come out the better on those situations. Also, he's going to be a slot guy, right? 5'10", whatever. No, he's going to play on the outside as well. He's going to primarily be a slot guy, no question about it. Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs is going to play a lot on the outside. And I think, you know, Jaden's going to play a lot in, you know, probably in the slot, a lot inside, a lot of motion, a lot of bunch, that sort of stuff. He's going to be able to play on the outside as well. Full stop. I have no question about it. Not sure how much they'll use him there, but if they want to use him there, he can play on the outside. I have no question about that whatsoever. Does a great job of working himself uh, and working his way back to the ball on scramble drills. Oh, he also has three punt returns for touchdowns in his career. Served as a really good punt returner. Also served as a kick returner in his career. So he's got return ability. He has a great knack as a wide receiver and as a returner for making the first defender miss. So he's not a great like broken tackle guy. He will break some tackles, but he, and that first move, he's got a little of that, you know, kind of Donald driver shake to him where he kind of makes that first guy miss. But 
almost always you watch him ball in the open field. First guy coming at him makes that guy miss and then is able to continue upfield from there. The other thing that I love, and this goes kind of back to his mentality, you can tell immediately how much this guy cares about the game. Like immediately. A, just the effort and intensity that he has, but he's constantly excited for huge plays. He's excited for teammates. He's running down. Like there's a play where he's just on a dummy route. He's on a complete dummy route. He's not getting the ball his way. And it's designed to go the other way. And the the his guy catches the ball and starting to go downfield. He's sprinting up the field. He's so excited that his guy, even though he was just a dummy route on the play, his guy's going down the field and scoring a touchdown. He's looking back at his sideline, completely fired up. He cares. He absolutely cares. He is fired up about football. He cares about the game. He is, like I said, you guys are going to absolutely love him. The more and more that you watch him, the more and more you get to know him. He is an extremely, extremely fun player can work at all three levels of the field. You can use them on the bubble screen stuff. You can use them on jet sweeps, reverses, all of it. You can hit the intermediate part. As I mentioned, he's not afraid to go over the middle and he can get hit down the field as well on those huge explosive plays with that great speed of his. He also drew 12 defensive pass interference penalties over the last two years, which again shows you how defenders are struggling to stay with them. And maybe the best part, there's a lot of best parts, but 46, 46 plays of 20 plus yards over the last two seasons at Michigan State. 46 plays of over 20 plus yards. This team, the Green Bay Packers, are a team that has been desperately in need of playmakers. Christian Watson showed he can be a playmaker. Jaden Reed, going to be a playmaker. Aaron Jones is a playmaker. I think some of these tight ends, Luke Musgrave, I think is gonna have the opportunity to be a playmaker. They've got some playmakers on this team. They've got some speed on this team now. They've got a fun group of weapons, and I'm really excited to see if they can make some of those big plays happen. They've got a lot of fun tools at their disposal. It's going to be really fun to watch on offense. Now, like every player, he does have some negatives as well. I'm going to tell you right now, the negatives list is pretty darn short for Jaden Reed. The biggest one is everything's around his size. He's undersized, 5'10 and a half, and you know, doesn't quite meet that 200 pound threshold what are we like? Who are we kidding? Right? It's not like there's no five ten and under wide receivers that have not you know have worked in the NFL. Like we see five ten and a half, five eleven wide receivers work in the NFL all the time, all the time. Antonio Browns, you know Tyler Lockett's like you you see these guys that are undersized that are amazing, amazing. Tyree Kill, like his size is an issue, and it's going to have some things that come with it, right? Even though he's an intense blocker, he can go up and play like a bigger wide receiver. Like Sometimes catch radius is just going to be a little bit smaller. He's not going to break a ton of tackles. He's not the most physical guy overall. Like he'll, he plays physical, but it's not like he's going to actually like out muscle a ton of people. So just that's like the biggest thing is if you can get over the fact that he's 5'10 and a half and a little bit underweight that Green Bay normally likes, that's his biggest thing. And it's the things that are usually around that size that limit him just a little bit. On the outside, on some of the outside routes, especially in press man to man, you can get you know rerouted on his routes. You know, corners will do a great job of you know kind of forcing him to the sideline, which really limits the passing lanes for quarterbacks. So that can be an issue sometimes. So yeah, like those are things that can happen to smaller wide receivers. It happens to him just like it does the other ones. I'm not overly concerned about it. Uh, he has no real special teams value outside of returning. Now that's a lot of special teams value. If you can be a great punt returner, great kick returner, that's like I said, a lot of value, but not going to go be probably a gunner down the field or things like that. I, he has the mentality to do it, but I don't think that's what you ultimately want him doing. Uh, there will be times, even though there's great blocks on film, there will be times where he goes a little bit more through the motions as a blocker. So I think we could see a little bit of that in Green Bay. He'll get a little bit chop, you know, choppy in his routes from time to time, but you'll also see him run very decisive routes. So every once in a while it happens, but it's not the end of the world. He does have 19 career drops in 44 career games. So basically once every two games, he's going to have a drop. You know, At least that's what it was in college. So that's not what you ideally want to see. It's something hopefully he can get cleaned up a little bit, but he has had some issues with drops. And he did have three fumbles in one game one time. So that can be, it hasn't been a major issue throughout his career, but that can kind of give you some of the idea of just some of the concentration stuff that sometimes he needs to get a little bit cleaned up. As far as what he can bring to Green Bay, 
He's a, I think he's going to be a dynamic slot receiver that can also play on the outside. He's a different flavor of wide receiver than they have in their room right now. Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson, Samori Toure, and even the two you know rookies that they got later in the draft are all different wide receivers than him. He just has a little bit different juice. He's got that, you know, he's a little bit shorter. He's a little bit smaller. He's a little bit more, uh, he, again, he's got that, that grit, that toughness, that mentality that you love, just different than what they have. And I like when, you know, receiving groups have different options of weapons available. He's going to give them a different flavor of wide receiver. He's got that great tenacity. He's got returnability. He's got playmaking skill. And I'm going to say it one more time. Well, I don't know if I fully said it earlier, but I think there's a chance. Now, this is a wide receiver group with only for rookies and second year players, right? I think he might be the, mo- the Packers' most technically sound wide receiver on their entire roster right now. And that's, you know, he's a rookie. That's still saying something, regardless of how young the room is. And I'll leave you with one final thought. One final thought on Jaden Reed. This is my opinion only. If Jaden Reed is 6'1, he's the first wide receiver taken in this draft, no question. He's not 6'1, he's 5'10 and a half. So, it's not like we get to pretend he's 6'1", but if he's 6'1", nothing else changes. If everything else was exactly the same and he was six foot one. I think he's easily the first wide receiver off the board. So do with that what you will. If you can get over the fact that he's 5'10 and a half instead of 6'1", and can do almost everything the way that he plays, and you know he plays like a 6'1 wide receiver, if you can get just past that height, Green Bay probably would have gotten the first wide receiver drafted in this in this particular draft. I think he would have went ahead of Jackson Smith and Jigba. Do with that what you will. Love, love, love Jaden Reed. The tape was so fun. I think you guys are going to absolutely love him. As always, there's no guarantee with any of these players. Jaden Reed could bust. You know some of the, the the weaknesses, the downsides. It's tough to learn NFL offenses. We'll see how he does handling that. He's had some drops. He's had some issues with that. He's not the biggest guy in the world. That could end up being a bigger problem in the NFL than it was in college. All of those things are legitimate concerns and legitimate things that he'll have to overcome and continue to work hard at. But a lot of positives to his game. I would be surprised if he busted in any way based on what he can do on the football field. And he is a very, very fun player on tape. Thanks so much for joining me today. Always appreciate it. Be right back here tomorrow with an all new episode. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go.